Hello, hello. This is Ana Imagination with The Healing Garden. So we're going to go ahead and give you an introduction to Try to Killing Part 2. But I'm going to tell you right now, we are not going in there. This is just an overview so you know what lies beyond the door. This is to prevent your forbidden fruit from occurring so you know what's beyond that door. When you open that door, you enter into the abstract. Now, this is the abstract, but this is the abstract. But you don't just walk into the abstract. <laughs> no, you have a door. The door is really big. The door is the seventh, the eighth, and the ninth ethical perspective. It takes four perspectives, the sixth, the seventh, the eighth, the ninth, just to enter the abstract. This is the doorway, the doorway. If you have been diagnosed with schizophrenia, come see me. Everybody who goes through the sixth ethical perspective to the 10th ethical perspective ends up with symptoms of schizophrenia. This is a common, very well-known, documented experience that exists in ontological physics, in philosophy. We all know this. Nietzsche wrote about nothing but this. Schizophrenia, in my opinion, does not exist. In ontology, the study of reality and the metaphysical, we talk extensively on the metaphysical transformation, which is the passing of the ethics from the sixth ethic to the ninth ethic. And a lot of things with physics happens here. I'm not going to be getting into it here. If you do not have the abstract intradimensional navigational system and a solidly defined sense of self, you can get stuck in the metaphysical transformation. I believe this is what catatonic patients are going through. I believe that people who are catatonic in mental homes have entered into the abstract of the metaphysical transformation without an abstract intradimensional navigational system or a defined sense of self. So that when they entered into the metaphysical transformation stages, they couldn't get themselves back out because you require a defined sense of self, which is the center of the universe once you enter into the abstract. And you have to orient yourself to determine where you are in relativity to everything. The problem is, it's not a problem if you know about it. The problem is, if you don't know about it, time and the self are going to change when you enter into the abstract interdimensional navigation area that requires the system known as the metaphysical transformation. Because time does not exist over here. That's the very first thing you lose is time, which is why so many people who've been through this are time blind. Time revolves around your concept of the center of the universe. Now, if you think the center of the universe is the sun, okay, all right, that's going to feel a certain way. And if you think the center of the universe is the Big Bang, okay, all right. But if you think that the center of the universe is the self, well, that's going to feel very differently. It's going to feel so differently that it's going to immediately change your orientation of relativity from where you think you are to where you now believe you are. And that's really going to mess with how you perceive things. This is going to alter your perception of reality. It's going to alter your relativity to everything. And you're going to lose a grounding sense of time. Now, if you are not familiar with navigating in the abstract, this is going to really fuck you up. It can fuck you up so much that you lose yourself in your own mind and you don't find your way back. Now you've got people who are catatonic. People who are schizophrenic are dangerously playing with the catatonic realm of the metaphysics without any of the navigational system. So long before we open that door at the six ethical perspective, I do not allow anybody access to my work until they have talked to me. 
until I evaluate them to verify that they are ready for the next stage because this can get fucking dangerous. Now, Mother Nature is going to do what Mother Nature does. She's going to evolve you at your own rate of growth and you are going to go forward regardless. Do you understand yet the dire situation we are in? That the further and the faster and the more we evolve into this perspective, this ethical perspective, the more our ability to perceive reality is going to change. And the more our perception of reality changes, the more we are going to be disoriented and lose ourselves so that we are not going to understand who we are and where we are going. But we have to move forward because that's what Mother Nature says. And once you get into that sixth ethical perspective, there is an insane pull to go. And you don't know what that is. You just, you've got to go. Now, a lot of people have made it into the seventh and the eighth, and they're not okay. I collect those people. A lot of people have made it into the seventh, eighth, and ninth, and tenth. And a lot of people have made it through. Now, at the tenth ethical perspective, you learn something called emotional fluidity. I'm going to be blunt. If you were to learn emotional fluidity back here, you'd be fine. But the ethic emotional fluidity is at the tenth. Now, I can tell you, you really, really need to learn emotional fluidity, which is why I teach people that emotions are logical and you need to allow them. Because if you are evolving fast into that sixth, seventh, eighth, and ninth perspective, and you do not have emotional fluidity, you are going to have emotional resistance. Physics does not like resistance. Now you're going to be experiencing severe cognitive dissonance. You are going to be in a lot of pain. Now, if you do not know who you are, and you have that level of pain, and physics is playing with your brain, and you're resisting Mother Nature while you're being pulled into the metaphysical transformation, you're fucked. You're fucked. A lot of people manage to get stuck. A lot of people shut down. A lot of people end up in mental homes. A lot of people end up on medications. And the numbers are rising because we are evolving. So we're going to see a massive spike of more people entering into the metaphysical transformation being medicated, being put through this because psychologists have no fucking idea what they're doing. And I have the research and the documentation published in multiple science magazines and catalogs to prove that. They just spent $500 million on schizophrenia research and their research was inconclusive and they admit, I don't have any idea what I'm talking about. They said they have no idea what schizophrenia is or what causes it because they have not studied ontology, philosophy, metaphysics, or physics. Meanwhile, Aristotle, Nietzsche, Socrates, Plato, all of us, Descartes, all the philosophers, we've studied it. We know it. So, but yeah, yeah, the world is a mess right now. So my goal is always to stabilize the self get you solid in who you are. And then we walk you through what's happening at that metaphysical transformation, what you can expect, and make we make sure that you are prepared for it by the sixth ethical perspective. As soon as we have you solidified and stable, well, Mother Nature does what Mother Nature does. Like All I do is make sure you have the understanding of my experience when I went through it. The more emotional open you are to allowing your emotions, the more fun you're going to be. You're going to see things. You are going to hear things. At the 10th ethical perspective, 100% of the people, it goes away almost overnight, instantly, instantly. It's weird. You wake up and you're like, wow, I'm fine. As soon as you learn the, the ninth ethic, which is emotional fluidity, as soon as you learn that at the ninth ethic and you graduate to the 10th, it instantly stops instantly and all the pain is gone and it's like wow that was all just emotional resistance wow so it's all just emotional resistance don't resist it don't be afraid it's okay at the 10th and the 11th and the 12th well you're gonna normalize you're gonna normalize now this is when you get into the deep the deep abstract now you're, this is where a lot of people struggle because once you get here, you don't want to go back there. And this is where you've got to be prepared 
for not wanting to go back. Now, you do want to go back later, and then you learn how to navigate between both realms. That absolutely is coming. That's what we cover with you at the third triad healing part. But in the second triad healing part, we focus on the metaphysical transformation, and then we stabilize you, and we teach you how to stabilize you at the 10th, the 11th, and the 12th, and that's normalizing. Then you get to go through the ethics again. The next 12 ethics, when you go through the entire 12 ethics a second time, is literally the valley of shadow and death. It's hell. It is so much worse than the first 12 ethical stages. It is a fucking nightmare. It is fucking hell. That is when the real trial begins. We are preparing you for the second trial. You have to have all your skills in place, which is all of what we are teaching you. So our entire mission is to get you stabilized at the triad of killing, get you stabilized of the self, get you prepared, teach you all the skills you're going to need. Because when you complete the metaphysical transformation and you are in the deep abstract, that's when you get through the door and you go, oh my God, that was just the door. And then you turn and you see deep abstract and you go, oh, holy fucking shit. And then you look at all the people going, look, I'm awakened. <laughs> no, you're not. You don't have a clue. Because now <laughs> it's just starting. The people who claim to be awakened are literally like one sixth of the way through. No, no. Buddhists are at the seventh ethic. They, they only are one sixth of the way through. The valley of shadow and death is fucking hell. It's fucking hell. And that's, it's fucking hell. There's an oasis. You're going to hit the oasis. Everyone hits the oasis. The oasis happens at the seventh ethic. What did I just say? Seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth? Yeah. Tenth is emotional fluidity. That's just the door. A lot of people open the door and they go, I made it. And then they sit and that's the oasis. The Buddhists are caught in the oasis. The oasis is fucking hell. Because the oasis, you can live there with all your mental illness. And you can still be just as fucked up as day one and not even know it. So you'll give up your healing journey. A lot of us do in the seventh. You think this is it. This is nirvana. It's like in, in Land Before Time, when they get to that grove of trees and they're like, we found the Great Valley. And then all the dinosaurs ran and they ate it. And they're like, oh, they ate the Great Valley. Now what do we do? That was not the Great Valley. That's the oasis. The oasis is a mirage of death. And you'll sit back and you'll think everything's great because you're in the oasis, not realizing you're in a mirage. It's fucking hell. When you get past the metaphysical transformation, there's a period of normalizing. And you spend about two to three perspectives normalizing. And the reason why is because you are resting up for the hell that is about to come. And then you begin the second ethical perspective stages, round two. Thank you so much. And may the kindest of words always find you.